Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Format Text node in Unreal Engine. This node is quite useful when we are trying to translate mixes of text, values, currencies, depending on gender, plurals, etc. So let's roll intro. Okay, so we are back in the engine and we are going to see how to use format text to concatenate text in the engine. First of all, the first thing that comes to mind maybe is using append, a tool that can concatenate to strings. This is not the proper way of doing it. Remember that the localization dashboard does not look for strings. It looks for text. So if we do it this way, we are going to be able to merge those strings, but later we are not going to be able to translate them and adapt them to certain languages. So that's why format text exists and it's quite an easy tool to use and way more powerful than append. So if you are localizing your game, you should forget about append and just use format text. So uh, here we have the format text uh, tool. As you can see, you can write uh, something in the format uh, input box. You can use wildcards. So inside the curly braces, you can write names. Let's add a new one here, for example, hour. And you can see that as soon as I add uh, some curly braces and a name inside, another pin pops up in format text. This is a, the way of inputting things to format text and format text will uh, place them correctly using the wildcards and whatever else you write in the input box. So here we have the date, today's date, and the as date is going to output some text with the properly formatted date. Next, format text is going to merge everything in the order that we chose in the input box. And then it's going to talk to the set text and change the user message in the UI. Once we are done, we can save and test out the, the game. And let's see how Unreal Engine translates everything. For now, it's not going to translate it to Spanish, but it's going to properly format the date. So as you can see in the top right corner, you can see the June 17th, 2022, 2022. And now if we go and change the language, so we can go to edit, editor preferences, remember, and in the region section, region and language, we can choose Spanish Spain. And with that, we can go ahead and dock the editor preferences we, because we are going to be changing quite frequently. So if we play now, we are going to see how the date format has changed and we now have no capital letter in the month and a dot instead of a comma. So you can see that it is properly formatting it depending on the country. Next, we need to gather text because for now we have properly formatted dates, but we also need to translate a date to Spanish. So uh, for that, we click on gather text and then using the translation picker in untranslated, we can go ahead and choose date and we just need to translate date to fecha and then remember to input the wildcard because if not, it will not use the wildcard. So we just need to copy the format from the untranslated version to the translated version. Last, we need to compile text. Remember always doing that. If not, it's not going to update in the executable. Next, if we play the game again, we can see that the in the top right corner, we can now see fecha instead of date. 
and a properly formatted date for Spanish Spain. So with this, you see the potential that format text has, because as you can see, we can not only translate, but also have properly formatted dates, properly formatted numbers, etc, etc, etc. That's why we are going to take a look at another example of a crate in which we want to display the value of the object. So we use the text render actor and with that we set the text to the stored value that we can modify in each instance. We can establish the base currency with the as currency node and then the format text is just as easy as writing costs and the value wildcard. So with that, we are going to get a text that states the cost of the object that we have just inputted in the level. If we go to the translation picker, we can translate the cost. So we can translate costs to cuesta, the value. Remember the wildcard always. If not, it won't work. So curly braces and value and exclamation mark. With that, we will have uh, the text translated to Spanish so we can compile text. And whenever it finishes, the engine will know the changes and we can go ahead and with the editor preferences, choose English first. And if we take a look at the crate, in game, we are going to see that on top of the crate, we can see the, the cost. So there it is. You can see it says costs $10.40. Take a look at the currency symbol and the decimal place separator. Right now it's a dot. So just remember that because whenever we change language now to Spanish Spain, you are going to see how that separator changes and the position of the currency symbol is going to also change. So you can see it right now. It says cuesta, so it translated costs, and it also says 10, 40 US dollars. So that's that. You can see that everything is working properly and you can see the, the format text working pretty well. Next, we changed the value in the other box, in the other crate, and you can see that it says 0.12 USD. So, cuesta 0.12 dollars. So, right now, you can wonder why the quantity that we have in the crates has, instead of uh, $10.40 with a dot in the, in the middle, it says 10.40. So, 1040. It's because of the decimal places. It assumes that the two rightmost um, numbers are going to be the decimal, the decimals in the quantity. And that's how the ask currency node works. So that's why you see 1040 instead of 10.40 with a float number. So let's take a look at another example, this time using gender to switch depending on, on set gender. So in some languages, words, uh, prepositions and things like that change depending on the gender. English is not the case, but for example in Spanish, that's the case. So we are going to use that uh, construct in the format input box that says gender, so the wildcard gender that depends on, on the other elements and then those parentheses with both um, words depending on gender. We are going to change the phrase to be a little more complex, so we need a little more, so for example, uh, changing a couple of words depending on the, on the gender. So in this case, we are going to say I am a child in a robot body. In Spanish, you, you are going to see that we need to change both the article and, and the noun. So 
you are going to see that uh, both need to be changed and how we can do that. So you can see this example. It, it is as simple as going to the localization dashboard and gathering the text. We also need to compile. This is just a, a small function that when you press Q, it just shows a message on the HUD. So it's quite simple. The most important things are the the format of the of the format text and the wildcards. So let's go ahead and use the um, the translation. So you can see that it says "soy un una niño niña en un cuerpo robot." So that's the proper Spanish translation. So you can see that uh, the a changes with un una and the noun also changes. So whenever we are done, we can go ahead and compile the text and you are going to see that, well, I'm missing a exclamation mark there, no, nothing too important, but let's fix everything. And now if we compile text, you can see that everything is going to be translated. And depending on the gender that I choose in the BP bot, you're going to see that the message is going to change. So let's first see it working with the feminine. Soy una niña. So you can see it's una niña. If we now change in the VP bot the gender variable to masculine, you can see that in game it's going to change. Oh, and by the way, there is a neutral gender also, so a third option can be added if you want to have that into account. So you can now say, you can now see that it's un niño en un cuerpo robot. So un and niño. So you can see that it switches depending on the gender that we have chosen. If we now go to English, you are going to see that it says a child. So no changes there. It's going to say the same thing for feminine and masculine gender. So you can see that everything is working properly and we can now distinguish between genders and we can localize having that in our minds. So summing up, we have chosen a date and we have formatted it properly. Next, we took a look at as currency. So to format currencies and BP bot. So now we are going to take a look at a more complex example, not too difficult, but a little more complex, in which we have a quantity of objects and an entity. And we are going to get all of that and we are going to format it all. And you see that entity is robot. We are going to be able to translate it. Next, we are going to have a format text of a format text. So in the object position, in the object wildcard, we are going to switch depending on the plural. So for example, in this case, you have one orb and when it is plural, you have orbs. So we are going to be able to switch the word depending on number, so num. So you can see that with that, we are going to be able to say robot found a certain amount of objects, in this case, orb or orbs. Next, we are going to talk to update orbs and that's pretty much it. We make quantity instance editable so we can switch the quantity in our level. So let's take a look at um, how this looks in game. Right now, you are going to see it without translation. If we now pick the orb in front of us, it's a one orb, so singular, you can see orb. And if we pick orbs, so a lot of orbs, you can see that it is plural. Please take a look also at the format of the number because you are going to see a change. So for example, right now it had in the thousands, it had a comma. If we switch to Spanish Spain, you are going to see that the separator in the decimals and the separator of the thousands, it's going to change. In this case, if we now pick the, the orb, you are going to see that it doesn't have a comma in the thousands and it doesn't have a dot in the decimals. 
has the comma in the decimals and, and a space in the thousands. So you can see that Unreal Engine is also accounting for numbers. So not only dates, not only currencies, right now it's also localizing properly numbers. So you can see right there what we need to translate. We have the entity that found the object. So in this case, entity and control, and that's that. Next, we need to translate the object wildcard. So we are going to translate the plural of orbs. So it's quite easy. It's just copying the words on the, on the left and substituting them by the proper translations. So in this case, it's going to be orb for orbe and orbs for orbes. So pretty easy. In this case, we are avoiding using the noun because it's not needed. So it's just an entity encountered an object with a number, in this case, orbes or orbe. So you can see that everything is translated. Well, we need to also translate the entity. So in this case, uh, it's a robot. So it's pretty much the same, but that's pretty much it. So translate the last sentence, which is robot. So it's exactly the same in English and in Spanish. If we now go to the game, you are going to see that instead of saying it in English always, whenever we pick the orb, if we change language and compile text, important, we cannot forget about that. If not, it's not going to work at all. So let's go ahead and test it out. If we now pick the orb, we are going to see that it says un orbe and orbes in plural whenever it's a lot of orbs. So you can see that everything again is working as intended. So we have been able to also localize something depending on plurals. So as you can see, pretty easy. We just talk to the game instance and pass it the text and it shows the message. You can see that format text is quite powerful. You can switch depending on plurals, gender, currencies, you can localize dates, numbers, you can see that you can do almost anything. So just remember that with append the string, none of this is possible and you should use format text. If you are wondering about plural rules, you can take a look at the page that I have in the description. You are going to see an example of uh, Spanish rules and you can check other languages too. So that's it for this video. As you can see, the format text node in Unreal Engine is quite useful when we are trying to localize our game. You can mix and match wildcards, use it to switch between genders, plurals, etc. So if this video has been useful to you, like and subscribe. We'll see each other in the next videos.